The 2020 presidential campaign is already well underway. On the Democratic side, there are dozens of candidates in the race and possibly dozens more to come. On the Republican side, there's just the incumbent president. Everyone assumes he wants to be reelected. Most presidents do. But what if Donald Trump had decided he's had enough? Too many investigations, too much nastiness, too few upsides. It wouldn't be a crazy conclusion. How would you like to spend your 70s locked in the White House? So let's say Trump had decided he wants to lose in 2020 and get back to his old life. How would he do that? Let's see. He might start by proposing more than half a billion dollars in Medicare cuts. That's something that nobody outside the libertarian symposia circuit really wants to see. So you'd do that. Then he'd slash funding for the E-Verify program. That would allow companies to keep hiring illegal alien labor in violation of a key campaign promise. After that, he'd announce for bringing in even more low-skilled workers. That would push down the wages of the people who voted for him, the most vulnerable group in the country. Finally, he'd release a bunch of drug dealers back onto the streets right in the middle of the worst drug epidemic in history. And he'd continue our pointless military intervention in Syria, which in no way benefits the United States. If the president did all that, the message would be very clear. He has no idea what he ran on in 2016. He just wants out. But let's say voters still didn't get the message. Maybe they were too distracted by the Russia hoax to notice. At that point, you'd have to do something really extreme to get their attention, something so mindless and counterproductive that there's literally no way you could get reelected after doing it. You'd raise gas taxes. And in fact, the administration is proposing just that. According to news reports, the White House is negotiating with Democrats to hike taxes on gasoline in order to fund, quote, infrastructure. This is one of those ideas that everyone in Washington loves. It costs them nothing. They're too rich to care what gas costs. And by the way, they don't drive. But if you live outside the coastal cities and you're not rich, higher gas prices are a disaster. They hurt you immediately. That's always true. Anything that raises the price of gasoline whether it's the Green New Deal or some new tax scheme promoted by a fake conservative think tank, crushes the weakest in our society. Normal people hate it. Many of those people voted for Donald Trump the first time. It's nuts. And it's not like there aren't other, smarter, less regressive options if you want to raise money. There are many of them. We could roll back some of those 2017 tax cuts, which went overwhelmingly to high earners and big companies. We could tax the billions in remittances flowing from the United States to the rest of the world. Remember that idea? We could tax carried interest like the income it so obviously is. We should do that anyway, just on principle. We could even tax capital gains like we tax salaries. Mitt Romney might finally pay the same rate as your dentist, and that would be satisfying. And then we could get creative. How about an 80% tax on all lobbying produced by former members of Congress? That's a good one. How about an iPhone tax? Or how about a tough new tax on a trillion-dollar Seattle-based internet retailer whose entire business model depends on using public roads to deliver their packages. Companies like that have put an awful lot of American businesses out of work. They clog our roads. Why aren't they paying for infrastructure? We could go on. Plenty of obvious ideas out there. Hiking taxes on working-class rural people is not on the list, unless you secretly want to retire early. In that case, if you're really sick of the job, go with the gas tax.